So here we go, another lovely F1, caught shallow, and that's what we're going to look at with this video. Everything you need to know to try F1 shallow fishing for the first time. We're going to look at rigs, we're going to look at bait, we're going to look at tactics, we're going to look at how to use the rigs, everything you need to know to get you started with F1 fishing. So this is definitely a video you're not going to want to miss. There can be no doubt about it, the Jigger is one of the best fish catchers around, especially for F1s. You can catch hide, you can catch cart of it, but particularly for F1s, the Jigger is just a brilliant method. And it's just one of those rigs, if you are an F1 angler and you love your shallow fishing, you've got to have a jigger in your armory. I'm not saying it's the be all and end all and I'll show you that I've got other rigs set up um, and we'll talk you through those as well. But the jigger, it's just a brilliant fish catcher and it is one of those things that anybody can do as well. Whether you can only hold five meters or you can fish 16 meters of ease, you can all use a jigger and it's brilliant for that. Now, what is a jigger? Well, it's a simple inline float that runs up and down the line. Basically, it allows you to keep a tight line between your pole tip and your hook bait at all times. So essentially that lays on the surface, sits on the surface cocked, and you're working the hook bait up and down in a vertical sort of motion like this. And you find the depth where the fish are happily feeding, and then you just, because you're so tight and direct to the hook bait, the fish hook themselves. It's a deadly way of fishing. Now the rig is really simple. Um, I've got about three foot of line on here, of course, that depends on the venue you're fishing. If you go into Lindome Lakes, for example, where you might be fishing the Loco Lake, where it's 10 foot deep, you might want six foot of line and fish. Um, the beauty of this is that you cover a lot of water. So you might want six foot of line and be able to jig sort of four to five foot deep. But here at Shearsby Valley, for example, I'm facing about five foot of water and I know the fish are gonna come really shallow. So it's pointless me having really long length of line because I'm actually going past the fish. So it's all relative and about three foot of line is perfect. Um, I've got a little rubber stop here, a little float stop. Now this isn't essential, but I actually think it helps you find where the fish are. Um, I've got it set, the actual rig at the moment is set at 20 inches deep, the stop is at 20 inches deep. That's where I found the fish feeding comfortably today. But what I'll do, uh, this is like a, a depth guide. So once I found the fish, I'll um, obviously use, I'll set it a little bit deeper to start with and I'll lower it through the jigger trying to find where I get bites and make a mental note of it, where it is on the stop. And I'll keep moving the stop. Ultimately, I want to get my bait right up against, and the float right up against the stop as quickly as possible and sort of hold it and work it in those few inches below the stop. For me, that's perfect when jigger fishing. If I'm constantly lift, letting it go to the bulk, lifting it up, going down, I'm wasting a lot of time. I'm trying to fine tune this, where this stop's positioned because that's where the fish will be, if that makes sense. So 20 inches is good. So what I do, I'll, I'll show you how I'm actually fishing it in a bit, but I'm trying to get the rig down to 20 inches and working it within that little zone there. And then if I feel like the fish are coming shallower, I simply move the stop down and then I'm working it a little bit shallower. Hopefully that makes sense, but the stop, I find it really helpful as a guide. Look, I can move it up and I can fish a little bit deeper. I just think that that is a quick fire way of finding where those fish are sat. The float itself is just a 4x14 jigger. We only do one size and that's about perfect, especially for these depths. And then down at the business end, all I've got is a bulk of number eight shot there, well, stots, and then I've got a six inch hook length. That's 012, but it could be 014. As I don't think it really matters, um, especially on a venue like this, it's prolific. But I think the distance, the length of it matters. I think the six inch length is perfect. Um, the reason is when I'm flicking it, you'll, when I fish with it in a little bit, I'll show you. I flick the rig like that and I flick the pole tip and I can imagine that little bit of slack just there. You can imagine the caster is sort of fluttering down, flicking it up, fluttering it down, flicking it up, fluttering it down. And I think you get a lot of bites because the fish see the hook bait come in. So that's the jigger, a really simple setup. Um, one thing I will say is if you do want to try the jigger, don't necessarily put it on pole winders when you make your rigs up at home. Do what I do, store them on your top kits or something that you can keep them straight. Definitely benefits. If you've got any kinks in your line, the jigger doesn't pass freely through the line. So that's just the, the simple jigger setup. It's an absolutely deadly way of fishing. And I'm gonna show you how we get the most from the jigger and turn around and do a bit of fishing. Right, so let's show you how to use this jigger rig. 
And the first thing is the basics, the fundamentals of shallow fishing. And this goes with whichever rig you've got on. And that's feed, 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 feed again and feed a bit more. So we're trying to create that dustbin lid of bait where we've got a lovely little tight column of bait, which is why we're using a catapult and not feeding by hand. And we always, I like to feed before I go out. So I'll feed a couple of times, then ship out, then feed, then sort of repeat the process. I'm trying to get into a nice little rhythm. So I'll feed once or twice while my pole's away from the swim, get those fish really excited. And then by the time I'm out there, there should be one ready to catch. So we've got that jigger on and we're just gonna pop it out there. I'm not gonna slap it in. I'm just gonna hold it to start with. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm bomb it down to my 20 inch mark. And I'll just hold it for a few seconds. Then I'll give it a little jig, give it a little one of them. And then another one, and there we go, they've got one. Quick as that, and it's as easy as that at times. But you'll see, I wasn't like lowering it through my float, dead slow or anything like that. I'm using it to bomb down to that depth where I think the fish might be. And then work in the rig in those few inches. If I think the fish is shallower, I'll move my stop shallower. Nice little F1. And rather than working my rig slowly through it or anything like that, I don't think that's when the jig is at its best. I think you're better off bombing your bulk down. Fan that caster. Bombing your bulk through the float, getting down to that depth where your stop is set at, and then working that little bit. So again, get that bait going in. And there's actually an odd fish starting to swirl now. So, so get that down to the stop. And I'm getting indications. What, what happens with a jigger, the float, if the, if the fish are higher than where your bulk's at, you'll, your float will move to the side like that. You'll see it just start to move and that's what's happening here. When I'm feeding, I can see the float going to one side or the other, which suggests to me that the fish are higher than that 20 inch mark where we're actually currently set at. So, I'm not gonna waste, yeah, they're, they're higher than where I'm at already. So, the fish are there, I can actually feel them. Let's just slap it over. Sometimes you'll get one immediately on the slap. So I'm bombing that bait down. And yeah, I'm looking for indications, but they're there at the minute. They're way higher than where I'm fishing. So I'm using that stop. So I caught a fish, but it was a long time considering how many fish look to be feeding at the moment, it took a long time and I was getting all those side to side motions on my float, telltale sign that the fish are higher than where we're fishing. So we need to do something about that. But that's the beauty of this jigger. It covers a lot of, co covers a lot of the water with one simple rig, another little fish. Actually quite a small one, that one. They're nice all the same. So I'm gonna bring that stop down three inches so we're fishing at yeah about 17 inches now and let's just see if that's any better ideally we want to get that jigger in position lower it down to the stop and get one as quickly as that and that'll be the telltale sign whether we're at the right depth let's see so no indications this time which is a good sign and there we go the first time I lifted my pole tip, caught one. That's a telltale sign that you're at the right depth. So they were just a bit higher than where I originally thought at that 20 inch mark and they were about 17 inches. And it may be that I have to come even higher still. Oh, nice fish that one. But we've got, look at that one. Top lip, really nice fish, nice stamp. And the jigger is so effective. As long as you're reading the signs of where the fish are, that they're a little bit higher than perhaps, I'm gonna feed this margin for later. Um, as long as you're reading the signs on your float, if you're getting those side to side movements, nine times out of 10, the fish are higher than where you're fishing. So just keep an eye out for that. So it's an absolutely miserable day, I'm not gonna lie. It's freezing, the fishing's amazing, but it's freezing, it's wet, which is hence so why I've got my bait shelter set up. Um, but it's actually served as the perfect little table for me three different catapults here. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how important that actually is, the, the catapults. Um, we've got to create a tight column of bait at the end of our pole tip. 
If you were to feed by hand, don't get me wrong, you can feed by hand, especially if you're doing it close in, maybe five meters, something like that. But the more and more of this style of fishing I do, the, the more I realize that you've got to tighten that bait up. If you want to be successful at it, you want to imagine almost like a bin lid, a nice little column. You're trying to create like this tunnel of, pet, of bait going down constantly. And you're getting these fish in this one little tight little area, within reason of course. And the only way of creating that effect is by using a catapult in my opinion. You can feed by hand, by hand if you're fishing at like four or five meters, but past that, let's be honest, most of the time when we're shallow fishing, we're fishing eight, 10, 13 meters. We can't feed by hand accurately enough. And I think nowadays we've all actually realized that there's a massive benefit to using a catapult over trying to feed by hand. I've done it loads of times. I'm throwing my bait in and it's going everywhere. No good. We're, we, can, we can do things better than that these days. And the catapult is your biggest friend. And the reason why I've got different options is purely for distance. So I've just been fishing at Lindome a lot, which is a, a, a wide open sort of venue. You get a lot of wind there. It's very rare to have a flat calm day at Lindome. And I'm also fishing a lot further out there. I'm often fishing at 13, 14, even 16 meters in some, some situations. Now, if I was to try and get my casters out there with this catapult, it's just not gonna happen. However, this one, which is actually a waggler catapult, is perfect. It's got a nice big pouch on there and it allows me to get my bait out there at 13, 14 meters. I, get, I can get a decent amount of casters in there or maggots or whatever it is I'm trying to feed. And I can group them nicely with ease. And that's why I've got this catapult. However, take today, for example, I'm only fishing at about nine meters, eight, nine meters. That catapult's way too strong, way too strong. The, the, the bait just wants to go far, way too far. And that's where something like this comes in. So this is like, um, they used to be called deli cats. I'm not sure what they're called now, but just a nice delicate catapult. It's got a lovely fine elastic on there, but it has got a decent sized pouch on, so I can still put plenty of casters in. But it's all about having the right catapult for the distance. So I can feed, I can just ping those out there, and the casters go in the most perfect little bin, almost like a bin lid situation. So that one groups them nicely at sort of 13 meters, whereas that one groups them at sort of six to sort of 10 meters. And then I've got this one, which is a Preston one, which is sort of the in-betweener. That is perfect for sort of 10, 11, 12 meters. So I've got three different catties there. They've all got decent sized pouches on, which I think is really important, which allows you to put the right amount of bait in but they've all got different strengths of elastic to get you those distant, those perfect distances. And like I say, if you're doing it and you're bait and you're not comfortable and your bait's spreading too much, it's probably because you've got the wrong size catapult and it may seem a bit faffy having three different options, but trust me, it's well worth doing because like I say here today, that one's perfect. But where I was fishing yesterday at Lindome, that one was perfect. It's all about creating that lovely column of bait and using those catties to achieve it. In terms of presentation, like I say, I don't actually want to slap the rig. To For me, the jigger makes a bit too much noise. I like to plop it in, if anything, and I actually like to swing it out past, let it come under my pole. And we'll just get it down to that stop and then work it. And it's just a case of holding it, just so the stop is, I hold the stop about an inch above the float-ish, and then every now and again, I will just give it a flutter. So I'll lift the pole tip quite fast and it flutters that caster through the water again. See, now I'm not getting any indication. So it may be that, because I've caught one, oh, there we go. Because I've caught one, they might have just dropped down a bit, but we did get one, so. It's not the end of the world. I mean, it's a freezing cold day, but the fishing is incredible. And one of the advantages of the jigger over some methods is when the water's a little bit clear still, lovely fish, aren't they? Gorgeous. When the water's still a little bit clear, you can create that tight line effect and have a, a relatively long line above the stop. So you're keeping the pole away from the fish. Whereas if I was to do that with a fixed rig, there'd be a lot of slack and it'd be actually quite difficult to hit the bites. Whereas the jigger gives you that advantage of being able to hit the bites with that longer line. So on these spring days when the fish aren't fully up for it yet and the water's still a little bit clear, that can be a big edge. So 
So let's get that jigger in. And like I say, I like to bomb it down. Well, they're coming up. They're trying to eat the slow, ladies and gentlemen. What happened there? I do not know. So let's get out there and catch another one. Don't forget the basics, Joseph. Casters in as tightly as possible. Another good thing about using a catapult rather than um, than feeding by hand is actually it slows me down a bit. When I'm feeding by hand, I get carried away. I start feeding too much bait. Whereas the actual process of picking the catapult up, loading it, firing the bait in, slows it down, and it helps me create a nice rhythm, a nice routine. And rather than just spraying and praying. I'm actually building the swim in the correct way. As you can see, the jigger is just deadly. But like I say, rather than I used to in the past, lower the float, bait through the float really slow, thinking that I'm trying to imitate the caster going through the water and all that, load of rubbish. You're just trying to get the hook bait down to the depth where the fish are feeding and give it the occasional flick just to get that caster fluttering and catching their eye in that last little bit. That's all it is. And nine times out of 10, I even just catch my fish, just holding it still like that and firing bait at it. And that is sometimes the best way with a jigger. You don't have to jig it or anything sometimes, you just hold it. And once you found the correct depth, they'll pull you in. But, and then other days you do have to give it the old flick and there we go, that one wanted a flick. And you can imagine when you, your rig's settled, that caster's down, fully, uh, your rig's fully settled, the caster's down, that little jig, that sharp, lifty pole tip, is just fluttering that caster up through the water. Quite natural, in fact. It looks a bit alien to us, but it's obviously doing something, fluttering that caster through the water, which is a brilliant. Look at that. And that's the advantage of having a banded caster on, by the way. It doesn't burst your bait. So actually I can catch two fish on that caster. Lovely fish that. So we'll catch one more. I'm just gonna drop a bit deeper to try and show you how we get those indications. So I've deliberately gone down to about almost three foot deep there, which is the wrong thing to do. But I wanna show you the signs to look out for to come shallower. So let's get this down there. So I flicked it out, and like I say, I pretty much bomb that bait right down, and look, the float's immediately gone to the side, look, straight to the side again, to the side, look, to the side. You can see the float is dancing all over the place, and that is just showing you that the fish are higher than where, the, where we're fishing. And that is the beauty of the jigger, look. So I'm actually fishing. I did catch one, but it took ages, and I was getting loads of, loads of indications. But on a match day, when the fish are up and down a lot, that can be an advantage being able to do that. Dropping down a bit deeper with the same rig. It's, it makes fishing so much easier. But that's the beauty of the jigger. You don't miss any bites because you're in direct contact with the fish. You can search that water column the full length of your rig and you'll catch loads of fish on it like this. So I think that's pretty much summing that up. Don't forget to work it, find the depth that the fish are, comfortable feeding at, bomb that rig through the float to get to the depth where the fish are. And then once you've hit the depth, flick that rig every few seconds just to flutter that caster through and you'll catch loads of fish with it. Absolutely deadly rig, real winner. Hopefully you can see just how effective the jigger is. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. So let's look at the standard fixed rig, which is my go-to rig, the one I like to use sort of early in the match, working out where the fish are in the swim in terms of depth. It also lets me pick off fish that might be a bit wary on the edge of the feed. So let's have a look at that go-to rig. So there we go, that was the jigger. Absolutely brilliant way to fish and hopefully you picked up a few things there when it comes to working the rig, setting it up and all that. But now we're gonna look at fixed rigs more traditional style rigs. And I must admit, if I can catch them on a fixed rig, I'm much happier, I'm much more confident. Um, I've grown up fishing fixed rigs. The jig is very much a new thing for me. And uh, I'm more confident. I've done a lot more hours fishing like, like with a fixed rig. So I'm much more happy to use one. It's a little bit more faffy because you need a lot of rigs set up. I'll have three or four rigs set up at different depths so I can keep in touch with the fish. 
Um, but I'm much more confident in using this. And the rig is, is simplicity in itself. Uh, again, I'll start at the top. I've got about 18 inches of line between the float and the, and the uh, elastic connector. I've then got three number eight stocks as a back shot there and they are positioned about three inches above the float. That just allows me to fish with a slightly longer line. It's still, I mean, I'm absolutely freezing today. In the summer, I'll show you the other rig what I'll use in summer, um, but at this time of year, I feel like having the pole tip away from the fish a bit isn't a bad thing. And that's the reason why I've got this longer line and then those number eight stops. The float is a four by eight tinks, just a tiny little float, and it's currently set at about 15 inches deep. Um, I've just got a tiny little bulk there of number 11 stops, and then I've got a three inch hook length um, with a size 16 hook. That for me is like the ultimate shallow rig. And what it is, I just need to work out where the fish are feeding. So I'll, like I say, in a match, I'd have two or three rigs set up. But today I've just been moving that float up and down, using the markers on my top kit. They're really important. You might think they're a gimmick, but they're not. Uh, using the markers on my top kit, I can move that float around, stay in touch. As soon as you start missing a few bites, come in, take a bit of depth off, or pick a different rig up that's a little bit shallower. Likewise, if you're not getting any indications, try a little bit deeper. The reason I've got such a tiny little float on there, I just it just works for me. I like to, when I'm fishing so shallow, like 12 inches and stuff, I just think a four by eight works really well. Not saying you won't catch on, on heavier floats, it's what you're confident in, but for me, a little tiny four by eight like that, and I have it dotted right down to a pimple, so there's no resistance, and I catch loads of fish doing that. And uh, that's my little standard shallow rig. I don't, um, I don't really bother stringing my shots out. You could do, you get loads of bites doing that, but I'm very much trying to work out at what depth the fish are sitting at. So I'm trying to get the bait down in position, and if I get a liner or miss a bite, I'll take a bit of depth off or add it on. If I'm laying it in like that with a strung out shot, I'm always catching them on the drop, I might catch them on the fall and stuff like that. I'm not staying in touch with the fish how I want to. So I always fish with a bulk and I just think it keeps things more simple for me. And it allows me to read what's happening in the swim a bit easier. So that's the uh, the fixed rig. We'll show you how to catch fish on that now. I say this is a brilliant rig because you're just getting, you're finding where the fish are quite easily. You're reading the bristle, finding out where the fish are. If you're not getting any signs, go deeper. It's all the same, whether you're fishing the jigger, whether you're fishing this, whether you're fishing the little short lash rig, reading your float is everything. If you're not getting any bites, go deeper. If you're missing loads of bites, go shallower. It's quite simple. And I've initially set this at 12 inches deep. And as you can see, I've got my back shot. So three number eights, just a couple of inches above that float. And that's really important. I'm trying to use quite a long line so I can flick the rig over and stay tight to it with those back shot and you'll get the little dinks. Now I expect to miss more bites with this than the jigger or the other uh, fixed rig that we've got. But on some days, the fish will not come under that pole tip and this longer line rig with a standard float on can be absolutely fantastic. Let's flick the rig out. And again, I'm just gonna flick it out past the pole tip ever so slightly and hang on to that back shot. And there we go. And because we've got that back shot on, we didn't miss a bite. We're, we're as direct as we can be. And in this day and age, when everyone's jigger mad and overshotting mad, sometimes we forget about the, the basics of shallow fishing and forget about these sort of little rigs like this, because we're all obsessed with trying to catch them on fixed, um, overshotted rigs and whatnot. But sometimes the old school is the best. So let's have a look at the bait choice for these F1 shallow. And it's quite simple, but there's three options that most of us stick with. The first is four mil pellets. Now this is better when you're targeting younger F1s. By that I mean more stocky sort of fish. So those little ones that are first put in up to sort of, you know, a couple of year old fish. Newer fish that haven't had a taste for the natural baits yet. They love pellets. And don't get me wrong, the bigger ones do too, but that is more, when you're targeting the bigger ones is when you turn to the natural bait options. But if you just want to go and catch some F1 shallow on your local fishery, you can't really go wrong with four mil pellets, whether they're fishery ones, whether they're whatever you want to use, just make sure that they're coarse style pellets that don't sink too fast. And that 
brings us on to the natural bait option and to be honest i think most of the matches that are won on f1 shallow these days are won with natural baits whether that's casters or maggots in fact we'll start with maggots for the two maggots are probably the most versatile of the baits i've got here they work all year round you can even catch in the winter on maggot shallow on the right day if you get a particularly mild day sometimes when you're feeding them by hand the fish will come up they flood they're slow sinking they make a nice little rattle when you throw them on the surface obviously they've got a nice color to them so they're visual they're just a great bait and if i was just to pick one of any of these baits it would be maggots every single time Better still, you can catch underneath them on the bottom. That's something that a lot of anglers do and it's something I've had great success on in the past. And putting two maggots on when you've been feeding them all day with a catapult or by hand is brilliant. The only downside to maggots is you tend to need a lot of them. So in the summer months, because you've got, the thing is, the problem is with maggots is you're getting other fish involved, your roach, your skimmers, everything else is eating them. So you need to out like, power through the small fish and that means using a lot of bait so it's not uncommon uncommon to use four five six maybe even eight pints of maggots on some venues so that is the only drawback to maggots you do need quite a lot of them but if i was to only pick one of these three baits it would be maggots every single time but the third and final option is probably the ultimate match winner and that's casters when casters work nothing else can compete with it they're better than maggots for some reason. When, once they're on casters, you catch bigger fish. They're easier to catch. I'm not sure what it is. It must be the crunch, but they just love them. And it is probably, like I say, the ultimate match winning bait. The main advantage casters has over maggots is the fact that you can group them so much better. They're a little bit denser, they're more uniform, and you can just fire them in a lovely tight little area. That little column, I'm gonna to talk to you about the column effect when we get fishing. Um, and casters allow you to do that so much better. They make a lovely noise, so if I throw them on the surface, you can hear them like, it's, it's such a difference to the maggots. It's, it's similar to pellets, maybe even a little bit better than, than pellets. And you get all those different slow sinking colors in there that just, the fish just love them. It's just a fantastic bait is casters. It probably is at its best from April to sort of October, but when it's hot, few things can compete with casters. Um, you don't need quite so many of these as you do with maggots, but you're still going to need four pints at least. Um, but they're a great, it's money well spent, it's casters, you're going to catch plenty of fish on them. Like I said, I must have close to two foot of line above the float here. And we're not missing too many bites because we've got those back shots to help us. So once again, let's flick it out past. Trying to keep a relatively tight line. There we go, so that's two in two as quick as that. And that just shows you sometimes there's more than one way to skin a cat and it is why you do need a couple of options for your rig armory because all of a sudden we've caught two incredibly quickly on this when you would just naturally assume that the jigger was the fastest rig in your rig box but it's not always the case i'm just like i say I've, Got a 16 hook on there. Feed before we go out. And that, creating that tight bit of feed is just the, the number one priority. It's so important. Oh, we missed a bite. I thought it was going to go free for free then. Let me give it a slap. There we go. So we missed a bite, but <laughs> hooking three out of four ain't bad in my book. And that is the beauty of this rig. Now, just for argument's sake, I'm going to put the rig float a bit deeper because I've gone in at 12 inches there which I think is about the right depth at the moment the fish are quite happily feeding at the moment whereas in a match they might be a bit deeper but again just like I did with the jigger I'm going to show you what happens when we go to the wrong depth and what to look out for so let's 
put the float up another eight inches, which I think is probably past the bulk of the fish. I will catch one because there's a lot of fish feeding, but hopefully we'll get a few liners and show you what to look for and when to shallow up. So let's get them casters in. And once, once again, let's get it in there. So hopefully we'll miss a few bites now. You see, the float's gone to the side. Missed the bite. This is, we did get one, but I actually think that might be foul up. Right. But that was on the fall. I could see my rig going down and I got it. Which isn't really how I like to fish. I like to get my float into position and then get my bite. I mean, I'm not going to sniff at this fish, but to be at maximum efficiency, I don't like catching them on the drop if I can help it. Yeah, it is foul up because we went too deep. Look at that, look. It's a nice fish, that is. But look, he's right under there. Telltale sign that we're too deep. You now we missed, see the float going to the side. And that is just classic. If you foul looking an odd one, maybe missing bites, sure fire away. But let me just show you again what I'm talking about. Oh, fuck that rig I mean, <laughs> the fish are actually showing themselves today, which is obviously the giveaway. But there, miss bite. Miss bite. Just no good. Missing too many bites. Miss bite. And when you know how many fish are here, like there is a lot of fish feeding here at the moment. But the float's going to the side. Just, just all wrong. So we'll pass the fish. And that is the clear and obvious indication that you need to change something. If you're missing bites like that and you just you just know and I see so many anglers they'll be sat there miss bite, miss bite, miss bite and not do anything about it and then sit in the pub after and be moaning about the the fish and hitting the bites. And let's see if changing back down to that shallow depth gets us straight back into them. God, it's freezing today. I can't believe how good the fishing is here at Shearsby. On a great cold day like this. I've just got that. There we go, look. We shallowed up and immediately, as soon as that float reached its depth, we got our fish. And that is, that is what this fixed rig's all about. Reading your bristles, having a few different options, changing depth to suit. So essentially you're doing the same as what we were doing with the jigger, but you're just doing it with a fixed rig. And let me tell you, some days, and I think actually today is one of them, this rig will outscore even the jigger. So don't just think, because we're going F1 shallow fishing, you've got to be on the jigger. You don't, there are other options. But that's why we set up some different rigs and show you guys the different options. So the third and final rig for this session is the little dibber rig for fishing super shallow, tiny little line, getting those F1s to hook themselves against the pole tip. It's an absolutely fantastic way of fishing. It's so efficient and effective. So without further ado, let's have a look at the rig first and then just as before, we'll show you how to use it. So the final rig I wanna show you and talk to you about is the dibber rig. And I must admit, I've probably caught more fish on this style of rig than any other in my time. It's a, it's a little bit of a theme on the fixed rig that we already spoke about and showed you how to use. Um, but the dibber, I've caught so many fish over the years and it's all about having this short length of line here. As we all know, um, F1s can be crafty devils to hit the bites. Hence why we're looking at things like jiggers and in other videos you might see anglers using overshotted rigs. But take Shearsby for example, you're not allowed to use a shot, uh, overshotted rig. So, Having the option of having a little rig of a little tiny line here between your pole tip and, and the float is a massive advantage. And to be honest, that's about two inches. That's probably a long way from the pole tip. If, if I can, I'll have my float like that. And we're trying to create a bolt rig basically within the rules. We're not overshotting, we can't do that here, but we are allowed to have the float pretty close to, there's no like length limits. As long as it's sensible, that is sensible. You can fish with that an inch that is just below the loop, an inch below, and the fish up themselves and it's deadly. Again, you probably need a couple of these set up, but the rig itself is simplicity. 
as I say, it's quite clear still, so I'm fishing a little bit deeper, but in the summer, I wouldn't hesitate to have this rig set eight inches deep, with a tiny little length of line between the float and the pole tip. So the whole rig is about 10 inches long and you'll catch loads of fish like that. Uh, and it's just a brilliant way to fish. And again, we'll show you in a sec how to, how to use this rig, um, because there's a lot more like tapping and stuff like that involved with this. And again, I have it dotted. I've just got a four by 10 big head on that and I have it as dotted and flush to the surface as I can so I can barely see it. And I think that's a massive thing because they're just pulling it through and almost hooking themselves without feeling it too much resistance. A little bit different on this one is we've got some short hook lengths involved now. Three inches on this one. And the reason is because this rig is likely to be fished a little bit shallower. So like I said, I'm not averse to having rigs at sort of eight inches, 12 inches and 14 inches deep, just little intervals with that tiny little line above the float. So I'm, if I'm fishing at say 10 inches and I had a four inch hook length, obviously the bulk of shot would be out of proportion, it'd be above middle, above center by the time the loops and stuff were factored in. So you need a shorter hook length to allow you, your shot to be below center of gravity, if that makes sense, below the, below the center of the rig to balance it up perfectly. So. That's, um, that's the reason why you see a lot of the top guys using shorter hook lengths. It's to get your bulk further down the rig where it needs to be. And that rig, that is my favourite. If I can catch on this, I love it. It's just a brilliant way to catch. And it, like I say, it's simplicity in itself. Okay, so the final rig to show you is the little self hooker. The little dibber. I've probably won more money on this rig than any of the others. And it's just something that's deadly in the right situations it's almost like the overshotting that a lot of people are doing these days but you're doing it within the rules of a lot of fisheries where you can't do that and providing you're allowed to use that little short line it can be fantastic so we've got the float set probably two inches below the connector there we set it about a foot deep and let's show you this rig in all its glory now you might be wondering about tangles how you don't get tangles with such a short rig now there's one little way of doing it, and it is to put your pole tip in the water. So sometimes just whizzing your pole out like that and keeping a bit of tension, just keep tangle free like that. So let's tap it over. Now this is a totally different setup this is. We're actually gonna start tapping now and creating noise and disturbance and we're waiting for the fish to hook themselves against the pole tip. There we go, as quick as that. And that's the difference. Once you get on this rig, it's much more aggressive, it's much more attacking. You've kind of decided, right, the fish are at that depth and I'm going to catch them in the fastest way possible. And like I say, once, it's, once you can catch them on this rig, there's no going back. It's, it's just deadly. And because you're fishing shallower, right up at the surface, the fish are often a better stamp as well, like that one. Beautiful golden F1, look at that. Awesome fish. And I just love it. Once you get going with this rig, like I say, there's no going back. It allows you to tap. You can slap it, but primarily it's the tapping. Again, as long as you're allowed to do it, it's the tapping that makes the makes all the difference, in my opinion. You found the right depth, and then we're tapping the surface just gently. You don't need to fresh the water to a foam or anything like that. We're just doing it gently. But ultimately, those F1s love it. And then just feed. So let's get that them casters in. And let's, like I say, I'm, I'm, this is where I'm, I'm much more aggressive now. Now I'm on this rig, I'm much more aggressive. The fish are feeding well, and we've got to work out how best to catch them. In a match situation, I start off on that longer fixed rig, trying to find out what depth they are. And then once I have done that, then I'll make the switch to rigs like this where I'm much more aggressive. I actually think the fish are higher than where I'm fishing. There we go. So we're not missing any bites. We're actually waiting for the elastic to come out now. We're not striking at anything. We're just waiting. And the fish should up the sails. Don't forget your margin swims and your other swims. Hooking a fish is the perfect time to feed those other areas. And you'll notice actually, speaking about feeding our swim out there, how I do it, I don't actually, I try to do my feeding before I'm actually out there, if that makes sense. 
think one of your beast edges in shallow fishing is actually leaving the swim without the pole there for a lot for a lot of your time. I speak about this quite a lot. Burst my caster. You've just got to be careful with that sometimes when you're banding casters. Um, and actually having your pole away from the swim allows the fish to gain confidence. So I'm, not, I'm never in a rush to actually get out there. Sometimes I'll be two or three times before actually shipping out. Get the fish nice and excited, confident, confident and comfortable. And then they're actually easy, easier to catch by the time you get out there. And the problem we've got at the minute is the fish a bit too comfortable. <laughs> they're actually really high up. And this is where, in a match, you would have another rig set up, a duplicate of this, but a bit shallower. So you could, because the fish are coming up really high now, you could uh, capitalise on that. Look at that lovely big F1. And that is, it's a common trait that is. Sometimes the bigger fish are right up near the surface and a little dibber rig like this can help you catch them. A little key point I want to talk to you about is hook length length when you're fishing for F1 shallow. It's really important that you get things right and you actually need to use different lengths for different type of rigs. So if for the jigger, for example, I actually use a six inch hook length. So something a little bit longer. Because we're jigging the rig and we're flicking it up and the, the hook bait's fluttering through, having a little bit more slack and play between the bulk and the hook actually works in your favor because the ca caster or the pellet or the maggot flutters down a bit more naturally. So I have some six inch hook, hook lengths there, but I wouldn't actually dream of putting one of these on my fixed rigs, for example. Um, it just doesn't work for me in my head. So the six inch ones, I have them tied up and they're ready to go um, for my jigger fishing. For my fixed rigs, however, I actually use uh, a combination of three inch and four inch hook lengths, but nearly always a three inch, to be honest with you. And I actually use one of these longer hook length boxes, which has got loads of pegs in it, and it allows me to have variations of the same hook length. So I've got some um, 16s to 012, for example, in four inch and three inch there. And then I've even got some here at two inch if I needed to, if I was feeling really lucky. Um, the reason why we have these short hook lengths is about shot positioning. So if you imagine you're fishing 10 inches deep, and you've got a four inch hook length on, or even a six inch hook length on, plus your loops, your loop to loop, then your bulk is probably only gonna be that far below your float, which means that the balance of the rig is all wrong. Your shot is too high. You've got all this like droopiness going on. I need to get my bulk below center, if that makes sense. So if I'm fishing 10 inches deep, I need the bulk to be below five inches. And the only way to do that is to have short hook lengths. Three inch hook lengths, are about right for your fixed rigs to be honest with you and um, they just seem to work a lot of the fishing we do is between sort of 10 inches deep and about 18 inches deep and having that three inch hook length is a real real good thing to do they're a bit fiddly to tie but trust me they work really well if you can't tie them and you're relying on the pre-tides in the shop you can use four inches you're going to get a similar effect but if you can get to grips with tying three inch hook lengths it's a big plus so that's the hook length length covered, but what about the actual hook length and the hook combination? Um, I pretty much always band my hook bait, whether it's a pellet, a maggot, or a caster. Um, there's occasions when I'll straight hook a maggot if I'm catching a lot of eyed, but to be honest, a banded maggot or a banded caster is pretty much my number one choice. The band size is important. You don't want one of those tiny ones. You want like a medium band. It's the only way to get a caster in without popping it. And I actually put my caster on in the band by hand, but there's loads of banders and stuff available now. Guru have just brought one out. I'm sure it's fantastic, but I just do it by hand. And if you've got the right size the band, like the medium one that we do, the caster just pushes in there, no damage at all. It's quite easy to do, but, but it just takes a bit of practice. The hook I use is nearly always a size 16 B911-eyed. Um, it's just a hook that I've got so much confidence in. It's not one of the more trendy um, PTFE hooks, but it's an old school hook that just stays sharp all day long. And I think that's massively important when you're catching loads of fish. Like today, we're gonna catch over a hundred fish on this particular lake. I don't wanna be changing my hook every five minutes because the point's gone over. And the B911 for me, stay sharp all the time. And it's a nice light hook. You don't want something too heavy. We're fishing with delicate baits, four mil pellets, maggots and casters. 
you want something um, in relation to that. So B911 ticks all the boxes for me. And I nearly always use O12 hook length as well. Um, again, it's a confidence thing. I've used O10 in the past. I've used O14 in the past. And to be honest, O12 pretty much covers all my F1 fishing. And in fact, every single hook length in that box is tied up to O12. So there you go, size 16 bean and 11, 012, medium bait band. You cannot go wrong with that little trio and you'll catch loads of F1s on that little setup. And I think we've probably put more weight in the net on this rig in this few seconds straight away because we're catching bigger fish and we're catching them faster. And like I say, it's giving us the option of tapping, which we didn't have before and they love that just deadly absolutely deadly so we're not overshotting we're within the rules but with that short line <laughs> it's just just a game it's just an absolute winner so I'll just show you that once more Now one thing you might have asked, might be wondering about while we're catching a few fish, is the elastic. Now I've gone for the eight to 10 zip for a short kit, an F1 kit. And uh, for this stamp of fish, it's, it's my favorite. We're, we're fishing for 12 ounce to two pound average F1s, I suppose. Don't get me wrong, there's probably an odd bigger one in here, but 12 ounce to two, to two pound is your, is your sort of average fish. And this eight to 10 is perfect, but I wouldn't hesitate in using the white one, which is the next step up. If the fish were averaging two to three pound, that's the one I'd use. Um, but normally I'm on this one. This is a, it's a great elastic. It lasts well, it's soft. One thing I like about it is when you're fishing shallow like this, quite often I like the fish to just hook themselves and then sort of glide out your swim. You're almost not, not feeling them, pulling the pole down. They just, it just sort of hooks them and you don't really realize. And I like that. because I think they're just swimming off nice and slowly out your swim. Whereas sometimes if you've got a really heavy elastic on, you feel them donk on the end and the swim will erupt. You'll notice here, you'll get the odd splash, don't get me wrong. But like I just hooked that one there, great big F1. And you wouldn't have even known I'd hooked it because I've got the soft elastic on. I mean, that one's, two and a bit pound probably and I've got that lovely soft elastic on there and it's allowing the fish to just glide out the swim so that would have been a perfect one to end on but I'm just gonna catch a couple more just to show you that and we'll talk about the tapping it's really important so when it comes to your tapping we don't want to thrash the water to a foam Worst thing you can do sometimes, it spooks the fish. You run a, run a flat, calm day today, and granted the fishing's really good. If I was to just absolutely lever the surface with my pole tip, it wouldn't work. Whereas there, that was the perfect example. I literally just tapped the pole a couple of times, almost trying to imitate the cast as it in the surface, and we got a bite immediately. You're almost like tricking them that there's some, a few casters going in, and they can't help themselves. But I think you can probably see the difference that this rig's made. We're catching bigger fish, we're catching them more often. It's just so efficient. And it's the, having that length of line there is just, just, just brilliant. Show you that tapping for one last time. I hopefully catch one more fish. Cause I want to just show you the difference between, I just want to show you that it's all about just tapping the surface rather than <laughs> Thank you wrong, there's probably a, a day for that when you've uh, got to thrash the water to a foam as it were. But look at look at the lake, it's flat calm, it's quite cold, the water's quite clear. The last thing we want to be doing is creating too much disturbance on the surface. So we'll get the rig in position and then we're just gently, just barely touching the pole tip on the surface, just a little tiny little rattle and it's immediate. But I hope you can just see the difference this rig's made. That short line is everything when you're F1 fishing. It can make a, such a difference to your results. And if we were in a match today, 
I'd be fancying myself to come out on top. But there you go, lovely F1. Taking shallow on casters on that third and final rig we showed you. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the New Fish YouTube channel. And we'll see you again very soon on the next video.